Hello, and welcome to this overview of retinal degenerative diseases. I'm Ben Shaberman, Senior Director of Scientific Outreach and Community Engagement at the Foundation Fighting Blindness. So let's get started. Retinal degenerative diseases, at least the inherited ones, are relatively rare. Collectively, only about 200,000 people in the U.S. have them. And their rareness and the diversity of these conditions make them uh, particularly challenging. Now, age-related macular degeneration, which I'll also be covering in this uh, webinar, is actually a pretty common retinal degeneration. And that really falls in a different category. And we'll talk more about that throughout the, um, th throughout the webinar. So again, 200,000 people collectively in the U.S. have an inherited retinal disease. Globally, that number is about 4 million people affected by an IRD. What's challenging is that there are at least 270 genes, each of which, when mutated, can cause an inherited retinal disease. And because each gene plays a different role in the health and function of the retina, the mutated gene, each one, affects the retina in a different way. So in some respects, you can look at each, each gene um, mutation causing its own type of retinal disease. And not only does the gene have an impact, uh, the mutated gene have an impact on how the disease manifests in the retina, but the type of mutation can have an impact. And USH2A is a great example of that. So some people with USH2A mutations in that gene get just retinitis pigmentosa. They only have vision loss. That's their only symptom. Other mutations in USH2A cause Usher syndrome, which is combined hearing and vision loss. Another uh, challenging aspect of these conditions is that even two relatives that have the same mutation and the same disease can have differing severities. There are many cases where let's say a brother and sister have the same mutated gene, the same retinal condition, and one of those siblings has severe vision loss and the other one has moderate or mild vision loss. And there may be genetic factors or lifestyle, lifestyle factors that are affecting um, the severity. But again, the diversity of how these conditions manifest is, is very challenging. Now, age-related macular degeneration, as I already said, is fairly common. It affects millions of people, and we'll talk more about that in a few slides. But also, the risk is not, uh, associated with a single gene. There are multiple genetic risk factors and lifestyle factors. So we can think of retinal degenerations in a few different ways. There are a few different ways that we can categorize them based on how they affect the retina. One of these categories we call outer retinal degenerations. And this is where the outer retina is affected first. And, and that means the rod photoreceptors, which give us peripheral and night vision, are affected initially and lost initially. So in a condition like RP or RP associated with Usher syndrome, night blindness and peripheral vision loss are the initial symptoms. And then vision tends to constrict over time as more rods are lost and, and more peripheral vision is lost. Now, macular conditions are sort of the opposite. They affect central vision first. Macular conditions affect cones, which are concentrated in the macula and give us the ability to perceive details and, and colors. They give us vision in lighted settings and they also give us central vision. So when cones are affected, 
central vision is usually affected. And in many of these macular conditions, another layer of cells that are often affected are called the RPE cells, the retinal pigment epithelial cells. These provide support functions for photoreceptors. And when the, these cells are affected, the photoreceptors are invariably affected as well. Examples of macular conditions, obviously AMD, age-related macular degeneration, Stargardt disease, Best disease, and cone rod dystrophies. There are others. So another category we can um, consider for retinal degenerations are syndromic conditions. And these are conditions where not only the retina is affected, but other parts of the body or other body systems. Usher syndrome, as I mentioned, causes both hearing and vision loss. It also can affect, affect balance, the vestibular system. Uh, syndrome called Barty beetle syndrome affects multiple body systems in addition to causing RP. It affects um, the kidneys, it can affect the liver. People with Barty beetle syndrome tend to have obesity and often can have diabetes as well. Refsum disease, again, a syndromic condition. Often people with refsum are diagnosed with RP first, but this condition, which is a buildup of a fatty acid called phytanic acid, uh, can cause skin problems, muscle issues, and bone problems, among other things. So let's dive a little deeper into some of the more common of the rare retinal degenerations. And we'll start with retinitis pigmentosa. As I already mentioned, uh, RP affects rods first. They're Therefore, it affects peripheral and night vision initially. Over time, vision constricts and ultimately central vision can be affected. It's usually diagnosed in childhood or adolescence, but the severity of the condition can vary widely. It can be more severe where um, RP is diagnosed early in childhood, and then sometimes it's not until somebody is a young adult that it's first diagnosed, and it is progressive. Now, genetically, RP is very diverse. There are at least 80 genes, each of which, when mutated, can cause RP. I do hear some researchers say that that number is near 100. Regardless, it's a lot of different genes, which means that there are many underlying genetic causes to RP. Now, RP can be inherited in three different ways, three different inheritance patterns. Recessively, it, recessive inheritance is when the parents of the person affected are usually um, unaware that they're carriers and they're unaffected, and their child has a one in four chance of getting the disease if they get a mutated gene copy from each parent. Dominant conditions tend to run in many generations of a family, and it takes only one mutated copy of the gene to cause the condition. And the parent in this case usually knows they have the condition, and then there's a 50% chance that their child will inherit the retinal disease, will get that mutated gene. And finally, X-linked is a little more complicated. I'm not gonna dive into all the details on X-linked, inheritance, but generally speaking, females are carriers. They can be affected in some cases. More often, they're not. They're just unaffected carriers. And then males, their sons, have a 50% chance of inheriting the condition, and they're the ones that are more significantly affected. Now, RP affects somewhere in the neighborhood of 100,000 people in the U.S., now, on this next slide, I have two images. These are called fundus photos. And these images are what an eye doctor might see if they're looking through your pupil. Often they dilate it so they can get a good view of the back of the eye. And that's what a fundus photo is. It's an image of the back of the eye. On the left here, this big orange disc is a normal retina. It's got that healthy orange 
um, yellowish glow. In the center of this image is the macula. That's a deeper orange, almost a red. Within that um, macula is the fovea, which is a, a very rich area of cones, and the fovea gives us our sharpest vision. Again, this is normal. The blood vessels are normal. The yellow spot, while that can look a little alarming, is actually a healthy optic nerve. On the right, again, we have a fundus photo, but as, as um, many of you can probably tell, this is much different. There are dark blotches on the periphery of this image, and this is the classic degeneration that happens in retinitis pigmentosa. This is where cells have been lost. So undoubtedly, this particular person has some peripheral vision loss uh, from um, retinitis pigmentosa. This slide simply is a visual simulation of what um, someone with RP, what they might experience. Um, on the left, you have two young boys, both with uh, soccer balls, and you can see those images clearly. Someone with advanced RP will have constricted vision, generally speaking, and in this case, the simulation shows you can only see parts of their faces. And sometimes we think of um, the vision loss from RP giving somebody tunnel vision. Uh, sometimes it's compared to looking at um, an object through a tissue roll, or if the disease is really advanced, it could even be a straw. And because Usher syndrome is RP with hearing loss, this is also um, an apt visual simulation for someone with advanced vision loss from Usher syndrome. So let's talk a little more about Usher syndrome. As I mentioned before, Usher syndrome ca causes combined vision and hearing loss. It affects the inner ear in addition to the retina. It can also cause vestibular problems, balance problems, and even it can impact someone's sense of smell. Now, experts have categorized Usher syndrome. Um, they've created three subsets of the condition, Ush1, Ush2, and Ush3. Ush1 is usually the more severe type of Usher syndrome. People with Usher syndrome type one are born with profound deafness. Usually they have no hearing. The RP um, occurs much like RP as I already discussed. It may be, um, become more evident later in childhood or adolescence. Ush2 is a more moderate form of Usher syndrome. People with Ush2 generally have some hearing at birth and they may lose some hearing, but they may be more inclined to have hearing aids as opposed to cochlear implants, at least early on in the condition. And the uh, vision loss progresses, again, much like RP, but generally speaking, it's not quite as severe. Ush3 is a much more rare form of Usher syndrome, Ush3A. And the variation in um, disease manifestation for people with Ush3 is uh, variable. Sometimes it's severe, sometimes not so severe. Now, researchers have identified more than a dozen genes, each of which, when mutated, can cause Usher syndrome. It is always inherited recessively, so parents, again, are usually uh, carriers of the condition and are unaffected and don't know that they're carriers. About 25,000 people in the U.S. have Usher syndrome. So moving on to a macular condition, um, let's talk about Stargardt disease. And as I already indicated, Stargardt disease causes central vision loss. It's an early onset and inherited form of macular degeneration. And the hallmark of Stargardt disease is the accumulation of these waste products or toxins in the RPE cells, in those supportive cells. And we call those waste products, those deposits, lipofusin. And Stargardt disease has some similarities to dry AMD, which we'll discuss next, um, in that dry AMD is also caused by 
the accumulation of toxins and dry AMD can cause central vision loss. So Stargardt disease in most cases is caused by mutations in the gene ABCA4, which is um, always inherited recessively. Um, there is a dominant form of Stargardt disease, which is fairly rare. Stargardt disease is usually diagnosed in adolescence or young adulthood, but the disease can vary in severity quite widely. Um, young kids can be significantly affected, and I've met people even in their 40s who were diagnosed initially um, with very, very mild disease. Um, again, Stargardt disease causes central vision loss, and as I've already mentioned, it varies in its progression and severity. About 30,000 people in the U.S. have Stargardt disease. Again, on this slide, I have some fundus photos, normal retina on the left. On the right, we have a retina affected by Stargardt disease. And uh, there are these yellow deposits or these yellow flecks, the lipofusin, which are scattered um, throughout the retina. It's more concentrated in the central area of the retina and in this particular patient toward the upper part of the retina, the superior retina. And so again, as these uh, flex, these lipofusin accumul accumulate, they will cause vision loss. Here's a, a simplified simulation uh, of someone with a macular condition like Stargardt disease or AMD um, who has significant central vision loss. The reality is that the vision loss may be more patchy this is somewhat of a symmetrical circle. And while that could happen for some people, the vision loss may not be quite so neat and symmetrical. Again, this is fairly advanced um, disease. So let's talk about AMD. As I mentioned, AMD is common. It, it's actually the leading cause of blindness in people 55 and older. In uh, developed countries, 10 million people affected in the US, about 150 million people are affected globally. Um, with our aging baby boomer population, that number will increase or is increasing. Now, many people with age-related macular degeneration, especially um, the early form, will not have any significant vision loss. Only about 20, maybe 25% of people with AMD will have it progress to an advanced form where they will have significant vision loss. Now, the leading risk factor for age-related macular degeneration is aging uh, as well as smoking. Now, aging, unfortunately, we can't do a whole lot about. Research has shown that keeping a healthy lifestyle, keeping a healthy diet can help, but the single um, biggest modifiable factor for AMD risk is smoking. Smoking increases your risk at least three times, maybe four times. So the risk for AMD is yet another good reason to quit smoking. Now there are genetic risk factors that can increase or de even decrease the risk of getting AMD. And there are at least 12 genes that have been linked to AMD risk. And many of those were identified by researchers from the Foundation Fighting Blindness, researchers that we funded. So most, virtually everyone with AMD starts off with the dry form. The doctor looks at the back of their eye and they see the accumulation of these deposits called drusen. Many people, as I've already said, with dry AMD will not develop vision loss. But dry AMD can progress and there are certain types of drusen that are more likely to cause um, vision loss. And uh, the condition can progress so that central vision is lost. This tends to happen, though it's progressive, uh, it tends to happen more slowly. Now, another thing that can happen that uh, can affect vision pretty significantly is the onset 
of wet AMD. And we call this dry AMD migrating to, to the wet form. And the wet form is characterized by the growth of leaky blood vessels under the retina. And these le leaky blood vessels, if they're not addressed, cause the loss of photoreceptors, especially in the macular region. That's what causes the central vision loss in this case. Now, it's important if you have AMD, if you've been diagnosed and you have sudden changes in your vision, uh, to see an eye doctor right away because those more sudden changes, changes that happen over a day or two or maybe a week, that could be an indicator that you have wet AMD. Uh, the experience of wavy lines, like a door frame or a window frame that looks wavy, or maybe a sidewalk or a line on the road that looks wavy. These are um, often uh, the experiences that people with early wet AMD have. And if you get to an eye doctor right away, uh, there are several treatments that are FDA approved to mop up those leaky blood vessels. If you wait, the damage can be done. And unfortunately, at this point, there's no reversing it. Now, with that said, whether you have RP, an inherited retinal disease, AMD, or even normal vision, if you have a sudden change in your vision, it's always good to get to an eye doctor quickly so they can address whatever's going on. So we're back to a couple of fundus photos again. On the left is a, uh, a, a retina affected by dry AMD. Again, you can see these yellow spots, these yellow flecks. These are the waste deposits in dry AMD. We refer to these as drusen, as I mentioned. You can also see there's kind of this shadowy dark area in the center of the retina. So there's some degeneration that seems to be occurring in this macular region. In uh, the diagram on the right, there's this sort of C-shaped blob of um, redness, this bright red, and those are the leaky blood vessels that are the hallmark of wet AMD. And I showed you a couple slides ago of what the central vision loss may, the experience of that may be for a patient with AMD or another macular condition. So let's briefly cover some other more common IRDs. If your IRD is not listed on here, uh, don't worry. Uh, the foundation is addressing all of the IRDs. Um, we just didn't have enough time in the short presentation to cover every single one. But um, another relatively common IRD is choroideremia, which is caused by mutations in the CHM gene. It has some similarities to retinitis pigmentosa. It is an outer retinal degeneration, but it gets its name because it affects the choroid, which is the outer vasculature of the retina. But it also affects photoreceptors, obviously, and those supportive cells, uh, the RPE. Retinoschisis is also caused by mutations in a single gene. It causes a splitting of the retinal layers. The accumulation of fluid in the retina is a common um, occurrence with retinoschisis as well. Now, labor congenital amaurosis or LCA causes significant vision loss in young children. Children are born with significant vision loss. But LCA is a very diverse, um, really, family of retinal diseases. There are at least 24 genes, each of which, when mutated, can cause LCA. And each of these genes, when they're mutated, though they do cause significant vision loss, affects the retina in a different way. So each form of LCA um, is quite different from usually the other forms. Another uh, fairly common in, in our rare retinal disease space is achromatopsia. That's a condition that can be caused by five different genes, CNGA3 and CNGB3 are the more commonly um, associated genes with um, achromatopsia. 
Because achromatopsia affects cones, which give us vision in bright settings, achromatopsia's hallmark is day blindness. People can't see well in lighted settings. It can actually be painful to be in bright settings for people with achromatopsia. And the condition also causes problems with visual acuity and color perception. Best disease is another form of inherited macular degeneration. There are a couple genes that when mutated can cause best disease. Best one is the more prevalent of those. And then there are uh, more than two dozen genes that can cause this sort of um, blanket category uh, of conditions we call cone rod dystrophies, which are obviously macular. So one concluding point I'd like to make is that a lot of retinal diseases can look alike uh, when a uh, retinal doctor or other eye doctor is looking at the back of the retina. And clinical misdiagnoses are not all that uncommon. And our um, genetic counseling partner, Informed DNA, did a study of some of their patients and found that the clinical diagnosis changed once these people were genetically tested and their mutated gene was identified. And that's one of the important reasons for getting genetically tested is it gives you a clear diagnosis. And while your clinical diagnosis, what your eye doctor saw is not likely to change, these changes do happen. And again, it's another good reason to get um, uh, genetically screened to try to find that mutated gene. And in addition, an eye doctor may diagnose somebody with um, RP, for example, but a genetic test may reveal that something else is going on in addition, and the condition can be considered syndromic, something like Usher syndrome or a milder form of Bardet Beetle syndrome. Now, the good news is that genetic testing is available at no cost from the Foundation Fighting Blindness. And you can learn more about this. Uh, the genetic testing program is featured pretty prominently on our website. So if you go to fightingblindness.org, you can learn more about uh, no cost genetic testing to get a clear picture of your um, retinal disease and a clear diagnosis. And I might add, to finish off, fightblindness.org has a lot more information on these diseases and the research underway to overcome them. So thank you for your time.